All right, so um, I'm going to open up Rhino and um, type in Grasshopper in the command line, and that's going to open my Grasshopper window. All right, so let me just sort my windows here. All right, so I've got my Rhino viewport and my Grasshopper window side by side. That's a good way to set up your viewports um, so that you can see what's going on in both at the same time. All right, so um, the first exercise we're going to go over is uh, labeled 1-0 in the uh, files that we gave you. And just to give you a sense of what we're going to do, right, we're going to um, define this many objects in Grasshopper, and that's going to give us that same set of objects we saw in the image before. Right, so what, we're, what I'm going to be doing uh, for the entire webinar is I'm going to open a file. I'll delete out all of the objects. Right? And we'll first open it, look at what we have there, kind of get a sense of how much we have to do for that file, delete the objects out of it, leave the panels uh, present with uh, the additional information that we've given you there, and then rebuild it from scratch. Right? And in that way, and then I'll save it as a working file and then we'll be giving you those working files. So if there's any difference between the reference file and the working file, that may be a productive difference for you to understand a little bit more about um, surfaces or paneling. Uh, you can cross-reference those two files, right? Okay, so I'm gonna hit delete, and I'm gonna get rid of all, all of that, uh, all those objects that were there. Okay, and I'm gonna save as dash W, and that's my working file, okay. So we're going to be working with surfaces today. So uh, we're primarily going to be operating with the objects that are under the Surface tab. So if you browse over to the Surface tab in Grasshopper, this is where we're going to be spending the majority of our time. Right? And um, for this first exercise, we're going to look at a couple of different ways to create surface primitives. All right, so um, there are a few that we, we had in the image. There are Cylinder, Sphere, and Plane Surf. So let's go ahead and drop those down. And if you want to, you can experiment with um, grabbing any of the other objects as well. Um, and choose the simpler ones maybe to start. So I'm going to use the plain surf. Drop that in. As well as the cylinder. And the sphere objects. Okay. So again, just as a reminder, as we're going, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the question window, and we'll hit you up with a response. All right. So uh, we have three objects here, the plane, the cylinder, and the sphere. And they're being drawn in the viewport, um, even though we haven't given them any inputs. That's because each one of these has a, uh, a predefined local, um, sorry, a predefined default value, right? So if we were to, let's say, start with the plane object and we zoom in to the inputs, right? P is asking for the base plane. This is where in the world XYZ coordinate system do we want our plane to exist, right? Additionally, it asks for what do you want the dimensions to be in the X and Y? So how big do you want your surface to be in either case? All right, so by default, it, draw, it drew this uh, plane surface starting from the origin and uh, a certain number of units in the X and Y. And that's, that's just default, right? So let's be a little bit more specific and let's start to apply um, or add into the file the plane that we actually want this to exist, in, exist on. So the plane objects are under the vector tab, plane subtab. And let's go ahead and grab a plane, XY plane. Right? And this object asks for the origin of the plane as the starting point of that coordinate system. So let's go ahead and right click that and say set one point. I'm going to choose a point over here off to the side, allowing my point location option to be type coordinate. Right, so now I have a preview of my plane out over here. So if I connect the P to the P input, now that's where my plane's going to be drawn. All right, so we've defined the location of where this plane should be. 
Now let's define the, uh, the size. Now there's two main ways to supply an input to an object um, as a user. And um, let's take a poll from the group. Uh, would you like to, how would you like to define X? Give us a, uh, maybe an option on how we might be able to define X. Okay, so some people suggested a number slider, and another person suggested a domain. Um, both of them are correct. So if we look at X, I'll put my mouse over X and hold it there for a second. We get the pop-up here, and it says um, the name of the input is X size, and it says the dimension in the X direction. And the, um, it says one locally defined value, negative 10 to 10. So if we were looking at negative 10 to 10, or we were looking at the icon that's next to X size, we might notice that that's a domain, right? So you could say that I want my rectangle, uh, sorry, my plane surface to go from negative 5 to 5, and there, therefore it would be 10 units wide. Or we could just specify 10, and it will know to start from 0 and go to 10. So both of those answers that you gave us were correct. Uh, so well done. And let's go ahead and just use the slider to start. We'll get into domains later. So under a params input, we're going to drop in the number slider. And by default, it's, between, it's set to values between 0 and 1. So I'm going to right-click and edit that. And say that I want it to be between, let's say, 1 and 10. Maybe I only need a couple of decimal points. All right. So if I now hook that up to x, my plane surface now changes in width. Right? But notice that it's starting from the plane location and moving in the x direction. All right, so let's copy and paste our slider, and let's, let's uh, use the second one for the y input. And now we notice that we can control the height. Right? So we have a little parametric plane surface now. Right? It's only got a couple of inputs, which are really the width and the height. Um, but we now have control over this surface primitive object. Okay. Now, good practice is to align some objects uh, as we're kind of polishing our file up, as well as give things appropriate names. So let's go ahead and right-click our slider, the first one, and we'll, we'll call this width. And let's define the second one as our height. Okay, great. Now we have a plain surface object. Okay, so um, let's go to the, uh, the sphere object next. All right? Let's see what it asks for. B, that's the base plane. R is the sphere radius. Well, that's great because we already have a couple of objects that we can use. So we could copy and paste these, bring them down, and connect our base plane and our radius to the width here. And now we have a sphere that is located at the same plane origin um, with a different width value for its radius. And, of course, we can always right-click and reset the uh, origin of that plane, choosing a different location. Now they're both oriented relative to the XY plane, but they're uh, separately controlled in terms of their location and dimensions. All right, so take a minute to uh, look at the last one, the uh, cylinder, and go ahead and see if you can't figure out what you might uh, connect to the B, R, and L inputs. All right, so if you took a look at the BRL inputs, you notice that, again, we have a base plane. It's asking for the cylinder radius and the cylinder height. Right? So again, we can take our three values up here, copy them down, connect them, 
and now we have a cylinder. Maybe I'll set the origin over here to the front. Okay, so we successfully made it a few, a very simple, uh, yet they're parametric surface objects in the viewport. Um, and now let's take one more second to take a look at what's actually being created when we make our surface. Right? Does anyone remember what is actually controlling the surface? We called it a what? And what is it composed of? I'll give you a hint. The first, it's a two-word answer. The first one is control. All right, if you remember from the uh, PowerPoint, uh, we have control points and a control cage. So um, a couple of you put that answer into the question box, and that is correct. Control points and a control cage. And any surface, although we see maybe just the shape of it, has that control cage as a part of it. So in order to visualize that, let's go to the Surface tab under Analysis, and let's ask uh, Grasshopper to show us the surface points. I'm going to use the cylinder as my reference here. So if I connect my cylinder into S, which is my surface, it shows me the control points of this object. Now, there aren't that many because this is a very simple primitive. Um, but these are the actual control points that would be used to construct this surface. And if we wanted to manipulate those points, uh, we could, and it would change the shape of the cylinder. All right. So now we have um, control over making some simple surface primitives, and we have an understanding of the kind of underlay that is controlling the surface geometry. So let's move on to the next exercise. Okay, um, we had a couple of questions, so we can take a look at that, uh, that now. Um, someone noticed that there is an extra icon in my um, surface utility tray here, um, which is actually a user object. So if you don't have that, you haven't done anything wrong. I've just added this to my collection of objects. In the same way that uh, you might not have more objects over here to the side under these extra special tabs, these are plugins for Grasshopper that you can extend a Grasshopper's functionality with. And um, the one that uh, someone pointed out, this egg shape one, um, the egg shape, the icon actually comes from Horster, which is a plugin. And the, uh, but the actual object that's stored there is a scripted object that allows us to unroll surfaces. So there are lots of uh, scripted objects out there that people share, as well as uh, some components now that uh, unroll surfaces uh, for you. Um, so if you don't have that, that's okay. And maybe a little bit later on in the webinar, I can show you how to create your own custom user object. All right. Uh, before we go on, were there any other questions that you had about the kind of basics of surfaces? Okay, you guys are really excited by the additional objects over on the side. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about those uh, at the very end of the, um, of the webinar, uh, but basically... Uh, if you're interested in learning more about those, yes, uh, stay tuned. There will be more options to learn about the additional objects I have over to the side of my, um, my tabs. Okay. It doesn't seem like there are any other questions, so um, let's carry forward.